All right, guys, welcome back to Urge. Moving on the subclass series into the next subclass, which is the Undying Warlock. And the last one in the book? Again. Well, that's not being updated, because they are going to reprint Blades oh, that's right. Wizard in Tasha's, which so, we will go over. So that's going to wait. That, that one's going to wait until the reprint. Yes, we're going to make sure there's no changes in it before we cover that one. So it's really... going to be perfect timing as well, because... When that video would have come out for Blade Singing Warlock will be when Tasha's comes out. And speaking of Tasha's, we're doing a giveaway <laughs> segue <laughs> for the new Tasha's book. So if you want to be entered in that giveaway, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Let us know down below right. about this video, what you're interested in, or what you're excited about in the new book. Be in that giveaway. And of course, we're going to be announcing the winner coming soon. So stay tuned to that. There should be a poll going out this week, I believe, because... Pre-shooting videos can be confusing in the time frame, but I believe in my head there will be a poll going out shortly around the time of this video being released. So, keep an eye out for that to see Boom. what we should cover in Tasha's outside of the that's subclasses. Because that's a good that's our, We're already going over all the subclasses. Don't worry about that. It's all the extra stuff because there are a lot of character creation options right. mm -hmm. in Tasha's that we'll be going over as well. So let us know down below mm -hmm. what you want to see in that and look out for that poll coming soon. Yes. So, if you're new to the channel, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the abilities gained in this subclass. And we're going to rate it based on its roleplay value, combat value, and overall class synergy based on how the abilities gained in this subclass improve on the base class abilities. And if you're new to the channel and you like what you see, subscribe. That's right. It always helps. Thanks. <laughs> so, we're just going to jump straight into this, guys. We're Boom. already we're, we're, we're into it today. That's Alex, right. let's go. Ah, we get spells. Warlock subclasses, you get some spells... And it's a it's a hot button issue, so I will. Jameson does not like the fact that divine casters, aka clerics and druids, get free spells that do not count toward their spells known, even though they can change their spells every day. Makes no sense. But other casters, well, I mean, for example, warlocks, uh, it, it, it's a it's an extra spell to pick from. It does count toward their spells known. Right. You don't just know it. You just get to, you get the option to choose from these additional spells. It makes no sense. I don't know. It, it's a hot button issue. We try to talk about it and move past it. So, anyways, so the spells you have to pick from as the uh, undying warlock: false life, ray of sickness, blindness, deafness, uh, silence, feign death, speak with dead, R of life, death ward, contagion, and that legend lore. That's the odd the oddball on the, on the list. The legend lore. Yeah. All the rest of them very thematic to Undying Warlock. Outside of your fun little spells you get to pick from, we also get Among the Dead. Yes. Level one, you get Spare the Dying Cantrip, which okay, help, can be very helpful because otherwise you have to try undying to... Undying Warlock, Sparing yeah, the Dying. Yeah, you know, makes, makes sense. sense. Uh, otherwise, you have to make, you know, normally like a medicine check, try to stabilize somebody unless you're right. a cleric who has this. Um, so now we're, this is the Warlock, you get this. Awesome. Also, Undead have difficulty harming you. If an undead targets you directly with an attack or harm or spell, the creature must make a wisdom saving throw against your spell save DC. On a fail save, the creature must choose a new target or forfeit that attack if they cannot target someone else instead of you. And if they succeed against that saving throw, they are immune to that save uh, for the next 24 hours. Yep. So, okay. yeah. One of those things that if, you, if you're in like a, you know, a horror campaign, that might be yes. pretty helpful. <laughs> yeah, if you're in like a horror undead themed yeah. campaign, this could be really good. To, you know, you have your party of clerics, paladins, and undead undying warlocks. warlocks. <laughs> yes. right. uh, then at level six, we get defy death. You give yourself vitality when you cheat death or when you help someone else cheat it. You regain hit points equal to 1d8 plus your constitution modifier when you succeed on death saving throw or when you stabilize a creature with Spare the Dying. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So basically, once a day, when you stabilize someone or, you know, yourself, you basically get them up. You're yep. giving them some HP so they go from unconscious yeah. to not unconscious. Yeah. It, it's a free, like, cure wounds without having to yeah, spend a spell slot on it, pretty much, basically. Then, at level 10, you get Undying Nature. You can hold your breath indefinitely. You don't require food, water, or sleep, although you still require short rest to reduce exhaustion and still benefit from finishing short and long rests. In addition, you age at a slower rate. For every 10 years that pass, your body ages only one year, and you are immune to being magically aged. This is, I mean, basically entirely roleplay, right. but um, can be very interesting 
in uh, certain circumstances, for sure. Mm -hmm. Finally, at 14, you get indestructible life. You partake in some true secrets of the undying. I think of the the house of the undying <laughs> in Game of Thrones with that guy with his eye his, his eyeballs like way back in the socket and the shaved head and everything. Mm. That's what I think of when I picture the subclass. Yeah. On your turn, you can use a bonus action to regain one d eight plus your warlock level in hit points. Additionally, if you put a severed body part of yours back in place, this feature the part reattaches. Mm. Once <laughs> once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a short or long rest. So you get a free extra. Like bonus action again, like a souped up level one cure wounds. It's not D eight plus your mod. It's a D eight plus your warlock level. Yeah. Uh, so a much higher floor on the uh, the heal, plus the ability to um, re reattach limbs. Yeah. So like before every short rest, if you're bored, you just cut off your arm and then reattach it and take a short rest to get the ability back. You know, again, very flavorful, to yes. say the least. So those are all the abilities. So we'll go into the rating section. First up is the role play value. Boom. Speaking of roleplay value, asterisk as always, when Ooh. we're talking about the roleplay value, we are talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically everything outside of the initiative order. We aren't talking about background, lore, class fantasy, class history. All of those things are on you as the player to act out. Of course, we can't rate that because how are we going to know how you're going to act it out? We don't. So we're acting it based on the abilities in the book. So, that being said, there are some interesting things on here for the Warlock. Now, a lot of you might disagree with what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Ooh. So, you are a Warlock. You have very limited spell slots. Most of the time, you're only going to have right. two. Uh, yes. Eventually, you get more, but for the majority of your campaign, most campaigns, you'll probably only have two yep. spell slots. Yep. So, you need to be careful with how you use those yep. spell slots. That being said... You do regain them on a short rest. Right. So it could make sense as a warlock if you are about to take a short rest and you still have a spell slot or two available to have something like Death Ward Death or Ward, Death Ward. Legend Lore or something like that or Speak with Dead because that way you're about to get that spell slot back. Anyway. So instead of having someone else, another spellcaster, use that spell, you can use it yourself and then you regain the spell slot immediately after a short rest. So if you... Have, you know you're about to do a short rest. You got one left. And you have one left. Spend it. You can use it for an RP thing that will save someone else's spell slot that but otherwise they wouldn't, get wouldn't be able to get back. Even though they right. have more spell slots than you do, they don't right. regain theirs back. So you, the spell slot's going to go to waste for you, essentially, right. if you don't spend but it. But being a warlock, you're not going to be too reliant on those two spell slots anyway, just because they're so limited. Yeah. You're going to be focusing more on your class abilities and Eldritch Blast. So, you know... It's not the worst thing in the world to be able to have RP spells as a warlock just because you do get them back, whereas other classes wouldn't. Now, that being said, casting up some of these spells is going to be pretty pointless. Like, if you upcast Speak with the Dead, it doesn't make it any better. Some interesting stuff there. Getting access to Spare the Dying, while primarily that's going to be outside of combat, you might stumble across someone who, you know, you're you are trying to save somebody yeah. and they've been kidnapped and they're dying and you you know see them and you immediately spare the dying to try to stop them from dying. Sure. So there are some situations where it's not directly in combat that you have to use this. No. But it is more on the niche use side of things. Again, with the undead attacking you and stuff, that's very limited based on the campaign setting and stuff like that. Um, and then your other options here, like undying nature is actually pretty interesting, not, being, not having to drink, eat, or sleep could yeah. come into play. And then, of course, aging... Uh, slower. Yeah. It could be really interesting. Especially if you're something like an older race, like an elf or something. You could live for a very, very, very long time. So, considering, you know, 10 years is one year, and then elves live for hundreds of years anyway. So, you could be... Live a thousand years. Very, very uh, <laughs> crazy going on there. Old coop. So, that being what it is. And, of course, like I said, reattach body parts. You know, you want to scare somebody, you cut your arm off, and then they're like, oh my god. What just happened? And you're like, ah, you reattach it, it, it like that, Meliodas and that, that would sense. be. I would. I would. That's give, what I picture. Yeah, yeah. I would give <laughs> super advantage on an intimidation check against like some <laughs> random person if you do that. 100. percent so, Yes, I will invent for <laughs> super like, advantage. Someone, just for someone that. comes to attack you and you just put your arm out there and you let them cut it off and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> you think <laughs> you can defeat me? <laughs> you know, so like that. Yeah, you can do some interesting Re stuff with it. Ow. Definitely more than reattach. Yeah. <laughs> So, that being said, we went with just a three and a half yeah. out of five. Mm. Just because, like I said, being a warlock, you're very limited on spell slots. And uh, 
Again, these are spells known as Warlock. They're not just innately, like you don't just gain them on your list of spells known. You have to choose from these RP spells to be added to your spells known list. So that is a sacrifice. You're having to pick an RP spell over another, yeah. you know, utility or combat spell. Mm -hmm. So just a three and a half out of five on there. Could be interesting, but some niche uses for sure. Over to the combat side of things where I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Yeah. It's a theme in this book. Yeah, it's, it really is. Um, uh, I'm going to go out of order, which I don't usually do. Oh. Um, of course, Undying Nature is strictly RP. Defy Death, you know, the fact that you get in basically a free Cure Wounds spell on, on yourself or somebody else when you cast by the Dying on them as a cantrip, it's cool. I, I like that both in flavor and effectiveness. But it's a once per day thing. Yeah, it's like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, uh, it's that's that's all you get at level six is is that, and between level one and fourteen, that's all you're getting for combat help yeah. is a free cure wounds <laughs> for yourself or somebody. Yeah, and at level one, you're getting spared the dying, so that's not ever for yourself. It's for other people. Yeah, uh, Indestructible Life, again, it's a super low floor, I'm um, super high floor your wounds because it's a D8 plus your Warlock level versus D8 plus your mod modifier. The fact that you can put back a Severed Limb, don't think the Severed Limb thing is really going to come up in combat all that much, unless, yeah. you, unless you've got to have two hands to cast a spell if your DM's really specific about the whole, yeah, yeah. you know, somatic right. material component things, verbal, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, reattaching that arm that gets cut off. Now, if it's a leg, I guess, you hurt your mobility because you can't... <laughs> yeah, and it doesn't specify how you reattach it. Like, if you get both your arms cut off, how do they reattach? So two of your four abilities are uh, a cure wounds and then a buffed up cure wounds. That one, one you get once per short rest and one you get once per day. Outside of your level one ability, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And your level one, you know, spell dying, getting spared the dying cantrip is good because it just helps. You can just make sure stabilize somebody, which is guaranteed to make sure they don't get, you know, get outright murdered yeah. and be have to be resurrected. Um, and then I save this for last because it's the most niche, but could be the actually the best combat ability you get is if you are in a you know high rated undead campaign. Yeah, being able to have a chance to you know avoid attacks from undead creatures. Especially because a lot of un lower level undead stuff is not very much. So <laughs> they, ju they just swing at the first thing they can. You know, if it's it's not like it's a calculated lich. It's like, that dude looks like he's got some stuff going on. I'm not going to bother him with, right. you know, with necrotic right. magic and all this other stuff. I'm going to go over here and deal with this guy. You know, it's not some real smart tactician. Right. Yeah. But that's it. So there's not a lot going on combat wise. We gave it a two. I think that's a little friendly, but yeah, we, we gave it to you. There's some, there's some interesting options that for spells that you get that you would otherwise have access to. Right, and you know, you know, blindness, deafness, def, you know, can be a good you know CC spell in combat for sure. Uh, silence can be a big deal. Silence can definitely some help. Like Death Ward is a free you know free get up as well, and Contagion can really do some shenanigans yeah. uh, in, in in combat as well. The lack of consistency with these abilities, and yeah. again, there's again, it, it's it it feels very warlocky that it's one use per rest. Or yeah. one use per day, and just like, okay. <laughs> Guys, I need to rest again. <laughs> yeah. Too much. It's like, I, you're going to Eldritch Blast the whole day, <laughs> except for two spell slots. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, lastly, we have the overall class synergy. Again, we kind of covered most of the main points on here for that. Um, being a warlock, you know, and getting spell slots is a big part of your class asterisk question mark I don't know you only get a couple of them yeah. so it's, really it's, it's a big deal? part of it it didn't say so, itself is a big part uh, so <laughs> getting extra options that you have on here that can be used for different things can be interesting yeah. um, of course you know I mean there's not really a whole lot to say about this honestly I mean being as a warlock you're getting invocations you're getting spell slots you know you eventually get your mystic arcanum but all that being said a lot of these are a bit on the more lackluster side, so we just went with a two and a half out of five. Mm -hmm. um, there's some things that can be useful in different circumstances and stuff, but a lot of these are going to be more on the niche side. Yeah. I mean, people have to be dying or dead, pretty much, or you know, trying to die yeah. to have half of your abilities uh, yeah, work, or you have to be dealing with undead things. Yeah. There's just not a whole lot going on with the synergy side, just because there's not 
There's not a whole lot going on there in yeah, general. Period. Yeah. I mean, the things that you're gaining are not really. Yeah. When, when the entire to... subclass fits on a tablet screen, and I'm not zoomed in to make it easy to read, <laughs> there's not a lot going on there. Yeah, it's very simple, and that's yeah. kind of how most of these are in this book. I mean, there's not really much more to say about this, guys. It's interesting. It's thematic. It is what it is. Th- theme wise, it is very interesting. Yeah. No question. But I think that's going to be all for this one, guys. So, again, we have the giveaway for Tasha. So, if you want to be in that, free stuff. Subscribe, like, comment down below what you think about Subclass, what you want to see from Tasha's. Hit the bell notification so you know all of our new videos are coming out. And uh, that's going to be all for this one, guys. As always, thanks for watching.